Hashem says that at the end of days, He's going to punish the wicked and reward the righteous with the same tool on this earth. It's called the sun. In Tehilim, Psalm 19, verse 5, David Melech tells us that Hashem is going to burn the wicked with the sun, while the righteous are going to be revived, meaning they're going to feel a healing power with this very same sun. And David Melech tells us exactly how it's going to happen. Hashem is going to take the sun out of its shell. Now, the last time you looked at the sun, which most people can't look at the sun for, for very long. But last time you looked at the sun, did you see a shell? I didn't see a shell. So what is David Amel talking about? According to our knowledge, that's not scientific, this is what the sun looks like. Just a big ball of fire. But David Amel says, no, this big ball of fire, that's the shell. The real sun is inside. Scientists, in just the past generation, Dr. Vidal, a senior astronomer at Greenwich Observer Observatory in England, a professor of astronomy at Australia's National University, they started taking pictures, x-ray pictures of the sun and discovered something very, very interesting. The sun really does have a shell. The real sun actually looks more like this. Where the real sun is a small ball inside, which obviously in comparison to us, it's huge. But the outside is a shell. Now why did Hashem create this sun this way? Because the sun that's inside generates, uh, or has a temperature that's generated of 15 million degrees Celsius. But the temperature that we get from, to our earth, and the temperature that we get from the outer part, is only 6,000 degrees. A little bit of a difference. Meaning that if this shell did not exist, neither would we. The sun generates every day with the 6,000 degrees that we get is more power than all the power that mankind has ever produced. And it does it every minute. Every minute that the sun exists, it creates more power than we ever had, that we've ever generated as a mankind. But that's with 6,000 degrees. If we really had the real sun, obviously it would be drastically bigger. But scientists also confirmed that the sun is precisely positioned in the only place that would allow us to live. Because if the sun was one degree closer to us, the earth would burn immediately. If it was one degree further, we'd all freeze. Same goes with oxygen. Oxygen on Earth is 21 degrees. The 21 uh, degrees of oxygen you have to have. If we have 22, Earth becomes explosive. The next guy that smokes a cigarette destroys the world, becomes an atomic bomb. Everything is destroyed. Just for one degree more oxygen. If we have 20 degrees of, uh, uh, of oxygen, we won't be able to live, won't be able to breathe, and the world is destroyed instantly. This is shown, showing to you that obviously all of this is very, very precise. This cannot happen as a mikre, meaning as a happenstance or coincidence. Another thing that the Torah says in Parashat Bereshit, Genesis, we talk about creation. Hashem says that he split the water from above the heavens to, uh, from the water from below the heavens. Now the water below the heavens, you know, if the heavens is the sky, below, water below the heavens, we see it, we know it, it's the ocean. 72% of the world is, is water. So okay, so we see that there's water. But Chazal says, no, no, no. The water here is not the real water. The water here is very, very little. 
The real water that allows earth, allows mankind to exist is the water from above the heavens. So until recently, we didn't discover any water anywhere. Mars doesn't have water. Pluto doesn't have any water. The uh, moon doesn't have anything. Doesn't even have the flag they say they have. So where is this water? Especially if it's so much more water than us. And then we, these smart scientists, Dr. Sigward and Dr. Louis Frank, started looking into the stars and they started looking into something that we call, you know, different meteors. These different things that fly around and sometimes hit Earth. And then they see something that everyone has seen at some point in their life if they live in a city outside of New York because there's too much pollution in the sky. You see a shooting star once in a while. Usually most fishermen enjoy this. You see a shooting star is a star that just makes a little streak. And everyone likes this, like, oh, a star is falling. It's not really a star, it's falling. What it actually is, according to scientists, according to evidence that we have today, it's a comet. A comet is one giant ball of ice. And the streak is being made because it's going in a direct line to uh, across the sun. So it's melting much faster than it would melt normally. So that streak is actually water. A huge amount of water. And that water arrives here. Every single day, millions and millions of comets go through the atmosphere and they melt by the time they come to Earth. And that's the actual water that revives us and that allows us to survive. So they said, okay, fine, you proved that there's water above the heavens, but where did you prove that there's more there than here? So these telescopes finally came through, finally caught up to us and say, oh, actually the outer shell of the entire universe, so if you have a universe, this is everything. The entire shell is ice. And these comets, these comets that we get are small little chips that break off of it. Chazal knew this again, many, many years ago. 